Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. It is February the 12th, 2021. Let's talk about a loaded division. Let's talk about the upcoming WBO, Super Welterweight Title Fight. This is the 154-pound weight class. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, one of the best things about boxing, and I mean the best, is the fact that it is a worldwide sport. Right? Some of these fights are really battles between the two best in their respective countries. So the champion right now, the WBO, super welterweight champion, is from Brazil. His name is Patrick Texeira. He is 31-1 and one with 22 KOs. Right? But understand, the gamblers are all over this fight. They know all about it. Because the challenger, Brian Castano, from Argentina, who's 16-0-1, the one draw, being a fight with Arislandi Lara, where he has Lara up on the ropes. The challenger here is going off at greater than 5-1 to one odds, right? He's a 5-1 to one favorite over the champion. A guy with 16 wins, right? With fewer wins than the champion has knockouts is a greater than 5-1 to one favorite over the champ. Now let me say this. Castano is on my list, and we all have lists, of uncrowned champions. I fully expect Castano to win this fight. Let's dive into styles, right? Let me also point out that Castano, in the World Series of Boxing, a pseudo-amateur, pseudo-professional fight series years ago, beat Sergei Derevianchenko. Yes, that Derevianchenko. So this is a guy who's been in the ring with world-class opposition. Understand, at 154, the fighter who can make you look the worst is Arislandi Lara. I'm not saying he's the best. I'm saying he can make you look the worst. Castano has already fought him. But I want people to hear me clearly here because I believe how we think of gambling is just wrong. Gambling's really investing, isn't it? It's speculation at times, isn't it? I fully expect Brian Castano, who again, I consider an uncrowned champion, to win this fight. I'm expecting him, as we'll discuss, to do so emphatically. But at these odds, this isn't a fight you can invest in. This isn't a fight where you put money down and you're expecting a rate of return. I can't take Brian Castano as a greater than 5-1 to one favorite. There's not enough value there. So even though I think he's going to win the fight, <clears throat> if you put a gun to my head and said, who's going to win this fight? I'd say Brian Castano. But if you put a gun to my head and said, how are you going to bet this fight? This is a speculation. It's not an investment. You're throwing money away here. I agree. But at a certain price, it's worth the speculation. Right? Just like at a certain price, based on possible outcomes, you understand that a Haseem Rockman 
is the play against Lennox Lewis. Not that Rockman's going to beat Lewis, but you understand Rockman has power. If Lewis gets a little lackadaisical and Rockman lands, Rockman could win the fight. Well, here, that's the scenario. Patrick Textera, the champion, 31 and 1. You're getting a plus 375 on. It's a speculation. I expect him to lose. I'm going to throw a few dollars on Patrick Texera because a champ who's 31 and 1, whose only loss was to Curtis Stevens, a champ who has gone the distance several times, right? His last handful of fights or so have gone the distance, who has stamina, who came back in his last fight against Carlos Adames, should not be going off at a plus 375. So the only bet I see here, the only risk reward that makes sense to me is a speculation on the champ at plus 375. A bet I expect to lose. But, just like you buy call options and put options to hedge risks, um, to, you know, throw for the moon, just like you think, okay, well, maybe Tesla isn't going to win out in the EV market in China. Maybe it's going to be NEO or XPeng. Right? That's the same thing here. The only bet I can recommend is a speculation that I expect to lose on Patrick Textera at plus 375. Right? Castano, who the gamblers know about, in my opinion, is the better fighter. Is going to win this. But they've taken the profit out of his side of the ledger. I don't believe he's worth the play here even though he's an excellent fighter with huge upside who, in my opinion, is going to make a lot of noise at 154 and 160 as those divisions consolidate. Now, let me say this, and I don't say it lightly. It's just how you look at life. <clears throat> Both of these guys are alpha, right? They have to impose themselves on you. That's how they see the world. You know something's wrong with Patrick Texera by the fact that he lost to Curtis Stevens. Right now, Stevens had a big punch, but Stevens is too tethered to the pocket. So, there's an easy way for guys with back foot games to beat Stevens. It's the Andre Durrell victory over Stevens. Right? Stevens is also a shorter fighter. So, guys on their back foot know, okay, Stevens is going to be in the pocket. He's shorter. I'm going to stick and move. I'm not going to get in a shootout in the pocket. I'm just going to riddle him with jabs, force him to come try to find me, and win the fight on my back foot. Now, the fact that Textera couldn't do that shows you he doesn't have much of a back foot game. Right? He's a very good fighter. He's a WBO, 154-pound champ. But he's alpha. That's how he sees life. He wants to be in the pocket winging punches with you. Brian Castano, same type thing. He wants to come forward. He's front foot heavy. He wants to mix it up with you. He wants to back you up. Now, I believe one of the secrets in boxing is to realize that sometimes alpha loses to beta, right? Let's think about the dancing duo of Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers, right? If you're alpha, Fred Astaire's the man, right? He's the lead as they dance. Right? He's the one leading the couple. He's alpha. But I believe if you're more aware, if you understand life a little bit better, you understand that 
the better dancer might actually be Ginger Rogers. Because Ginger Rogers is doing everything Fred Astaire's doing. Only she's wearing high heels and she's doing it in reverse. Neither of these guys, neither of them, can decide during the fight, you know what, the pocket's too hot. I'm going to operate from outside the pocket. These slow rounds, I don't need to land big shots to win the slow rounds. I just have to frame my punches and land more shots from outside. I'm going to be strategic. I'm not going to charge in. I'm going to be strategic and I'm going to be outside and I'm going to pick my spots. That's not either of these guys. Let's talk about Patrick Texera's fight style. He's a southpaw, he's a hard puncher. But as he stepped up in class, his opponents have found a way to survive. His last five fights have gone the distance. He's not defensively blessed. This is a guy who's in there throwing punches. You notice, as in his last fight against Carlos Adamas, that his eyes are getting puffed up. There's redness around his face, right? This is not an Ali type. This is not, look at me, I'm as pretty as a girl. This is not a Ray Leonard type, where the guy, after 15 rounds, looks untouched. No, you know Patrick has been in a fight. You see that he's been hit. He's not a mover. Again, this is a guy who sees himself as alpha. He's not going to move back as you come forward. That's not his game. He's not planning to get on his feet. It's just not macho enough. He's there to trade. Right? He wants to hit you. He's not that big on making you miss. His punches are hard, but they have a little bit of a loop on them. In other words, this is a guy who is loading up on shots, right? Is relatively flat-footed, isn't light on his feet. He's leaning into shots. It's more important for him to get power on the shot than it is for the punch to be completely accurate. The lack of orthodoxy throws off opponents. This is kind of like a Nakatani situation where the punch has a little bit of a loop on it and some fighters take a few rounds to figure out the arc of the shots because they don't want to go in there and get hit with big shots. There's a little bit of a Golovkin in Texera, only Golovkin is better at distancing. Now he was behind against Carlos Adamas who had the title right there for him. Right? Adamus was faster handed, had the hand speed advantage, threw the shorter punches, was getting inside on Textera, was making Textera pay for being around the pocket. But then, of course, and this is the kind of fighter Textera is, Textera, who was losing the fight, who was the underdog going into that fight, Drops his opponent in the seventh round. Drops him. It was sudden. Then, of course, the rest of the fight, he shows heart. As his opponent slows down, that's when the power shot started landing. Texera wins the fight by unanimous decision. Two of the judges had the fight 114-113. To win that fight, he had to come back in the fight. He did. His power ruled the day, the last half of that fight. Before then, he was in a bit of trouble. The other guy was just too fast. Well, here I believe Castano, who I, again, expect to win the fight, is going to be too fast. He has the faster hands. While he's front foot heavy, he's an angles guy. In other words, he's the guy who's coming forward, but you'll notice 
he'll bounce right or left right he'll bounce to throw you off there's a bit of Manny Pacquiao in his game in other words as he comes forward it's not in a straight line right he's actually coming forward he's throwing higher volume he's a faster starter than Patrick Textera but you'll notice that he'll bounce a little bit he also uses his legs for defense so if punches start coming back he will take a step back not that as he takes a step back he's hitting you with a jab and he's moving back and encouraging you to come forward no he takes a step back for defensive purposes he'll step out of the kitchen when it gets too hot so the other guy throws some punches misses then Castano will step back into the fire visually and this matters in a sport with judging visually Castano is the more exciting fighter I expect Castano to win this fight me and most of the gambling world again the challenger in this fight is the greater than five to one favorite I expect Castano to win this fight however he's fighting a guy who's very experienced right again Texera's record is 31 and 1 with 22 KOs he's fighting a guy who's very experienced he's fighting a guy whose last five fights have gone the distance he's fighting a guy who could be getting blown out and then can turn around the fight with a knockdown and whose punches with the loop become harder to defend the more battered his opponent is the later it is in the fight in summary this fights unbettable except for a speculation on the plus 375 right Textera simply to win this is a situation where the public thinks Castano is going to win the fight and Castano likely is but this is boxing KG vets champions like Texera know how to survive right again his last five fights have gone the distance he's only lost once they know how to survive and this guy has the punching power to hit an opponent who's going to be primarily around the pocket wanting to trade with him right Castano's not going to build a lead and then hide build a lead and protect it with boxing skills from the outside that's not who he is he sees the dance as one where he's Fred Astaire even if Castano's winning the fight he's gonna be around the pocket taking chances that opens the door for a plus 375 speculation with a champ who has 22 KOs. Let me also say too, Oscar De La Hoya is making statements that sound crazy. The head of Golden Boy Promotions. He's talking about how he feels his fighter, Virgil Ortiz, a young unbeaten fighter, is the best at 147, one floor down from 154. Right now, understand 147's loaded. I believe the best in the sport pound for pound, my own belief, is Terence Crawford, who is still unbeaten, who has a share of the title at 147. Right? Many people consider Errol Spence to be one of the very best fighters in the sport pound for pound. I personally feel that if Manny Pacquiao still has the hand speed that he had in the Keith Thurman fight and keep in mind Pacquiao you know is kind of fighter emeritus at this point right he doesn't fight that often he comes down off the mountaintop and graces us with his presence then he's out of the ring for extended period of times if he is still Manny Pacquiao with that hand speed 
with that suddenness. He might be too fast for both Crawford and Errol Spence. Pacquiao himself in an interview said that he thought Errol Spence was too slow for him. Right? Well, let me just say this. I believe Oscar is right. I think Virgil Ortiz, who I think is the top prospect in boxing, has a shot on all three guys, right? An Ortiz-Pacquiao fight would be intriguing, right? Because understand, Ortiz has a great jab, not a good one, it's a great jab. And he would be on his front foot. The question is whether a young guy is ready for Pacquiao's emeritus suddenness. Well, I believe Ortiz might be outgrowing 147. First off, let me just say, the politics of boxing are such where I don't think any of the big three are going to fight Virgil Ortiz. Right? Manny Pacquiao has fought so many guys in history, he doesn't owe us any particular fight. Right? I believe it's hard to tell a guy who's been an undisputed champion, like Terrence Crawford, you have to fight this young kid. When, of course, Terrence Crawford is doing things like beating both Amir Khan and Kell Brook. And, of course, Errol Spence has been taking out past title holders. Right? He beat Sean Porter. He beat Danny Garcia. The Sean Porter fight was blood and guts, right? Even challengers from outside the division, Mikey Garcia, unbeaten at the time. Errol Spence has fought and beat him. So I get the feeling that Virgil Ortiz ultimately is going to end up here at 154 pounds. I think with Ortiz's jab and his defense, which is excellent but subtle, Right? He's the guy who hits you and rolls a little bit. Just enough where you can't counter him. Someday he's going to fight Brian Castano. And that's going to be a hell of a fight. That's, of course, assuming Castano beats 31-1 and Patrick Textera, who, of course, was a highly regarded fighter not too long ago and signed himself with Golden Boy Promotions. So pay attention to this fight. This fight's the doorway to other matches. And, of course, one of the best body punchers in the sport is Erickson Lubin at 154. Let me say this, too, and I don't say it lightly. The best guy at 154 might be the guy who beat Erickson Lubin. And that's Jermel Charlo. Don't neglect the Charlo with an E. Right? So, 154, folks, it's loaded. This is the WBO Super Welterweight title. I believe it's going to be a coming out party for Brian Castano. Understand, Castano was the champ at one point, then got stripped. You know the way boxing is, right? He's kind of like the David Benavides of this division. Benavides, of course, is unbeaten, was the champ at 168, got stripped. He's still unbeaten. Castano, unbeaten, was the champ, got stripped, wouldn't fight someone, boxing politics and stuff like that. But make no mistake, he's one of the very best at 154. There's some big time fights that await, right? Virgil Ortiz, the young upstart. Lubin, Charlo, J-Rock. Others, right? Great division. This is a fight worth your attention. I expect Castano to win. The only bet I'd make on the fight is a speculation on a plus 375 for the champ Textera to win. I don't see it happening, but the odds are such where when you get to plus 375 and you're giving me 31 and 1 and the guy's wearing the belt, and the guy I know can fight for 12 rounds. 
I'll be the casino's Huckleberry. I'll make a donation to the casino in a fight where I expect the challenger to take the title. I think Castano wins this. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.